Hello everyone, uh, this is more of a intricate review than the uh, impressions video I did earlier where I was playing the initial bits of the game. <clears throat> that was more of me explaining the game itself. Um, I just completed it uh, from start to finish. I didn't do all the side stuff. Um, I did some of it, but not all of it. I just wanted to get through so I know the story so I can kind of get the review out so that you guys kind of know what's what. Although IGN and uh, GameSpot, for all the credibility they have, actually... I would actually say they did the game justice. I more or less agreed on all the points they made. But uh, anyways, getting onto this and reading off of what I put on Facebook to all the people I'm friends with. Without spoilers, it's a good RPG. In fact, it's a damn good RPG. But the conflict and the main villain felt underwhelming despite the premises, 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 whatever you have going on. You know what I mean? Going on. All right. You have basically the Orlesian Civil War, um, which I call it the French Civil War, so people understand what, what I'm talking about because they're not as into it as I am. Um, you have mages and Templars killing one another. You have the Divine being dead and some Fubar explosion that more or less opens the uh, gates of hell wide open. So you have all these issues going on. But the accumulation just felt underwhelming. It felt like everything was kind of resolved without any build-up, if there even was build-up at all. <clears throat> but on a more positive note, the characters and building of the Inquisition itself is pretty damn awesome. It's really involving. It really gets you thinking. It really makes you juggle decisions and stuff like that. However, there was the whole, you know, every choice a consequence. I didn't see much of that. Uh, I didn't really see a whole hell of a lot of that. Um, but on the other hand, I did see a lot of how the keep influences all of the stuff that you do in this game. Every decision really does poke its head up and say, hey, you chose me, remember? It really does do that. Um, and seeing some of the cameos and some of the other characters that kind of resurface up, you know, there were a couple of holy shit moments for me. Um, I did what I could to stay off the wiki so I didn't have all the spoilers thrown in my face. But yeah, so yeah, I had a few surprises. Most of, or pretty much all of them I welcomed, especially the, uh, without spoiling it, the very last uh, storyline scene, I was like, oh, well, they're, they're already setting up, setting up for another Dragon Age or something. It's definitely going to happen in a DLC or something or another. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, the uh, approval system or disapproval system. The way it works in Origins is it's either they liked you or they didn't like you. And if they didn't like you enough, they would eventually leave you. Um, aside from, I think, Alistair... And I think your well, your canine can never hate you. So I think Alistair's the only one that is guaranteed to never leave your side because he's obligated by oath to do the thing. So even if he hates you, it's whatever. Um, and then Dragon Age Two, it kind of determined how each character reacted to you, like how they spoke to you. If you had a rivalry, there was te there was kind of that uh, tense aggression, or in the case of you know, if you romance the character you're rivals with, it's like that I hate you but I love you type deal. And then in the case of, you know, where they like it, it's like, yeah, you're my bud, you're my best friend, I, you know, I got your back in everything, no matter what. Uh, we see eye to eye, and then when you have a romance, it's like, oh, yes, we love each other, we're totally into each other, blah, blah, blah. And this one, I'm, I, I don't see it teetering either way. I really don't. Um, so it's like the conversations are linear. I'm not, um, aside from, you know, the, the conversation choices you make, which can kind of affect their tone, but not their overall feeling towards you. And there's no, like, meter or bar or anything like that you can see so that you know who hates you and who uh, doesn't hate you. So, um, and another thing that I find interesting is that your every decision you make, every character is going to give you their reaction. It'll show up in a list of, like, who liked it and who didn't like it. And it really makes kind of juggling the decisions seem like seem a lot more important rather than just, oh, I just need to bring the right people with me, and then once I do that, everybody will love me, even though I'm kind of being a uh, two-faced person. In this one, everybody knows what you're doing. So I like that, but I don't like that I don't know who likes me and who doesn't like me, because I'm pretty fucking sure Cole hated my fucking guts, because he disapproved of just about everything I did, and he stuck around to the end and even joined in the celebration at the end of the game. So I was like, um, okay, hold on. My headphones were, like, juggling around. Uh, I'm also wearing glasses, so it might be the thing scratching on the uh, little things that sit on my ear. Whatever you call it, the frame. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, the approval system, I, I don't know how it works. Hopefully, um, in a patch or something, they'll throw in, like, a meter so that you know who likes you and who doesn't like you. Because otherwise, I don't see the consequences of them liking or hating you. Um, and as far as I can tell, the advisors do not have approval or disapproval of you. It's just a matter of how you talk to them. Like for uh, Josephine and Colin, if you uh, if you romance them, then just 
you know, you can, it pretty much tells you like, all right, if you say this, you're going to be into a relationship and you're going to build it up from there, or you can break it off down the line and start it with someone else if you want to. But once you break it off, it's a done deal. Um, which the romance scenes in this are pretty, pretty damn good. A lot better than what they were. Or, uh, actually, it's a lot of what they had in Origins, minus the uh, awkward cuddling, you know, that you had in Origins, um, with a bit more of the emotion that Dragon Age Two had. Although some of some of Dragon Age's Dragon Age Two stuff, it's I don't know, because um, with Dragon Age Origins, you could actually just rush right into it. Because all you have to do is converse with them, converse with them, converse with them. Oh, boom! They like me enough, and now they're into me. All right, so we've known each other for. A grand total of about five minutes, but we talked for those five minutes, and we know everything there is to know about each other, and now we're into each other. This one, it's it's a build-up over time, which Dragon Age 2 had that as well, which I like. Makes it feel more realistic, as opposed to, you know, the Leon and Ada storyline, where they, like, immediately fell in love, six hours knowing each other. Um, so, on to combat. It's good. I like it. Uh, the problem is, is may just feel a little too fucking simplistic. Um, I'm okay with a limited healing. I've kind of figured out how it works. It's actually pretty legitimate and uh, unbiased, um, especially once you get the mage's uh, revive ability, although I haven't tested on hard. Um, I've only played it on uh, casual and normal. Uh, but once you revive them, they're restored with like full health and all that stuff. So I'm like, all right, so as long as you keep your mage, well, actually, even if you lose your mage, you can still have somebody like run over and say, Tank, go revive him. I'll uh I'll, I'll hold them off here. Just get over there and get that mage up so that we have a chance to win this. So it's a lot of that running around, just keeping everybody alive. Which you know, it's like okay, there's a trade off here. I I get how it works now, and it makes sense. And you can get more potions later on down the line. I don't know what the overall cap is, but I got up to about twelve on my playthrough, and that was that was plenty to get me from start to finish. And they do give you recharges through the longer dungeons, so it's like. Okay, pit stop, let's heal everybody up, refresh our supplies, alright, let's move on. So, they do give you a nice steady supply, and there's plenty of camps that you can set up to restock if, you know, you're, like, in the middle of the wilderness, it's like, oh shit, we gotta go back. Um, but with mages, there's no real variety, um, the only class, the classes you have is spiritual, fire, ice, and lightning, but generally, fire, ice, and lightning, um, it's all damage abilities, there, there's nothing supporting uh, Spirit has some of it, but it's very, um, it's very underwhelming. It doesn't feel, um, as effective as it should be. Uh, there's a couple of abilities they have. Like I said, that revive ability, it's really good. There's a couple of other ones, like this barrier you can throw up. It's, it's on a time limit, but I think it absorbs, uh, damage for a little while. And it, it does help with kind of keeping the tanks, um, up and running. Or if you have a character on low health, it's like, oh, here, let me throw this on you. All right, quickly heal up. Otherwise, you can go to the tactical camera, which I barely use, but then again, I was playing on the easier difficulty, so I only really had to kind of occasionally point somebody in the right direction, and then every, otherwise the AI just took care of business. Um, I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to do a few more run-throughs. I'm going to play as a warrior, play as a rogue, so I can kind of get the feel for every for every type of character. That way, um, when I play, when I do the let's play of it, I kind of know how to use everybody, which right now I pretty much have the mage down. Almost to yeah, I have the mage down pretty fucking well because the mage I had was a fucking beast. I mean that bitch was wrecking people left and right. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, yeah, there's no variety of mages other than what element to use when. So basically, with the elements, it's like fire is really effective against these ice demons, and then ice is really effective against these fire demons. And it's just a matter of it's like how Devil May Cry DMC was. You just need to know which one to use when, and then you'll get more damage done. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, just spam spam away at all with all your abilities. Although there was like two that I used, and one was Chain Lightning, and the other one was like this uh, barrage that basically just shot out a bunch of uh, fire fireballs or ice balls or whatever staff you're using, whatever element it's akin to, and it like spams at one guy. It, it can do a shitload of damage. I mean, I was doing, I think I at one point I actually had it doing like 2k damage as a whole, or close to 2k damage per uh, rotation. Um, another issue I had, uh, with the game is that, uh, oh, hold on. Before I go into another negative, let's go into a positive. Uh, the storytelling was really good. There's plenty of moments where the characters feel like people with a range of emotions. Like, uh, you'll be talking to people about their past, or, you know, like, um, with Cassandra and Lillian, they feel like they failed the divine because she's dead. And you're trying to help, you know, kind of keep the, keep their morale up. And you can kind of see that they are really feeling fucking down. And you're like, oh man, that fucking sucks. 
But here, let me offer you some words of encouragement and tell you that, hey, this guy did this. We're going to get him back. And they actually feel like, I hope, you know, they, at first it's like, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But as you kind of become more successful, it's like, I believe we can fucking do this. I'm like, holy shit, character evolution. They're actually, there's a range of emotions. They're actually people. Um, uh, and the same with, uh, like, some of the characters that start off kind of happy. They kind of get a little fizzled down, like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. And your main character does the same damn thing, although you can come across as really strong willed and say, you know what? I didn't ask for this. I don't want this, but God damn it, I got to do it. So I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to see it to the end. And that's, that's how my first character was. Uh, they were a, um, at first, they were kind of like, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know what this thing on my hand is. I didn't know. I didn't kill the divine. What the hell? And then it's like, you know, shit kind of happens. And they're like, well, you can close the rift, so we're going to keep you around. And my guy was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and then it got to the point where once I was thrown into a leader position, it's like, I don't want to be a leader, but God damn it, I got to be one. So my character started acting more like a leader, making tough decisions, doing all this other stuff. But that's another thing is you don't really get too many tough decisions to make. It's not like, well, do I lose this or do I lose that? You never get any of that, which I, I felt like was kind of a downer. Um, there's, I mean, there are choices you get, and it does kind of vary the outcomes. Like uh, there's one tidbit where you can choose to banish this particular group of people, or you can keep them on with under your wing, and um, later on down the line, they kind of become independent from their main branch. Uh, I'm not going to specify who, so you guys can figure out who I'm talking about. Don't don't put a comment. Well, I'm saying I have to do something, it's kind of an invitation to do it, so I'll let you guys figure out what I was getting at there. Um, but another issue I had was that shops don't really fucking matter in this game. In fact, there's not that many shops at all. Um, the only time you're really going to use shops is to buy schematics for the weapons that you make from the materials you gather exploring the world. Um, it's it's basically like Skyrim with that regard. Um like initially, yeah, you're using the shops, you're selling stuff, but eventually it gets to the point where you have all these raw materials that you can just make your own gear that's kick ass. This one, you don't utilize. I barely utilize shops because um, potions you're going to get for free, and then you're going to find like recipes and stuff throughout the game. And I think you can buy them from shops, but otherwise you're never, ever really going to buy any kind of weapon from uh, the shops. Now, I need to look up if you buy a weapon and then destroy it if you get the raw material, like this, if that's how you get the schematic. Um, otherwise, the only reason you would destroy anything is to clear up space, and usually you get rid of your worthless crap. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to go sell all this crud I picked up in this dungeon down over yonder. <clears throat> otherwise, I'm like, eh. Once I figured it I at, at first I was like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing, but once I figured it out, it's like, oh, wow, this is really dumbed down, really simple if you know what you're doing. Um... Else, yeah, like I said, uh, looting tends to solve all your equipment needs and wants for the most part. Otherwise, you can just make your own stuff once you get these awesome schematics later on down the line. Um, the leveling cap is at 20, which I don't like it being so damn low because it makes it fucking nigh impossible to level up towards the later stages of the game. You have to do a lot of grinding. Um, you don't have... I, I think the point is to encourage people to play it more, to do more of the side shit, but you can do... You can reward me money that I can use, that I can spend on like let's say upgrades um or hiring people or other things otherwise it's like money just doesn't serve a, much of a purpose in this game other than to buy the recipes um you, you there's never a point where you have to storyline wise spend it on anything uh like you did in DA2 and uh DAO but I I mean, I it, I guess it works. I just don't like it. Is the thing. It's it's functional. It's not a broken system. It's just I don't like the way it is. Um, but th that's me. If you guys like it, that's that's totally on you. That is totally fine. It is okay to like this. I'm just not a big fan of it. I prefer it how it worked before. Um, I'm all for recipes being in there, and I think um, initially recipes should not be your go-to. I think it should be the shops and stuff. But later on down the line, once you get some better recipes and you get like these awesome smiths. That are like, oh shit, I'm going to go help join the cause. Because you do get a character later on down the line, which I didn't actually utilize as much as I should have, that's supposed to help you get better gear as you build it. Like, um, they, you build the gear, and then they like, here, let me add in this extra schnaz to make it that much better. Boom, that bitch is flaming. Now, you got a flaming fucking sword. Here you go, go kill a fucking dragon with it. Tell, come back and tell me how it is. We'll, we'll all share a... Uh, a, a dragon rib dinner tonight, and while we celebrate, and you tell us the story of how I, you killed 
this dragon with my fucking flaming sword that I built for you. Um, looting, blah, blah, blah. All right, so what I'm getting... Oh, all right, let, let me summarize this too because I've kind of gone on a little bit longer than I wanted to on that point. Um, what I'm getting at here is that there's no real economic management aside from the resources you gather, which are mostly easy to find as long as you know where to look, which I, I did eventually get to the point where I'm like, okay, so I need this, this, that, this, that, and the other. And I get them from here, here, and there. And then there's a bit there, a little bit there. And then if need be, I can go here where there's a bit as well. So it's easy to mass produce all this stuff. And you can even use your advisors to kind of support the cause and bring in a little bit more. Uh, but the biggest, biggest fucking positive, well, not the biggest positive, but one of the bigger positives of this game is the scenery. Holy shit, is this scenery the best I have ever seen in a game. God, they really... Whatever they did in DA2, they completely top-sided it with this. I mean, I was, like, fucking blown away by the environments. I'm just like, holy fuck. How do you go from what you had in DA2 to this? How the fuck did that happen? Whoever they hired, good fucking job. This is some of the best environments I have seen in a game ever. This tops Skyrim. This tops Fallout. This tops any of the older Dragon Ages. This, even, this tops fucking Mass Effect. This is the best I have ever seen an RPG look in terms of the overall world. Holy fuck, they put some details in it. And even my, like, like I even got my drivers update. I got all these updates on my laptop. I still cannot run it at full specs. It is that fucking impressive. Um, although I know some of you can, but um, it's my, my PC isn't top, top, top of the notch, but it is top notch. I can run it at a steady frame rate, um, but I, I'm, I'm tweaking the settings a little bit. Just so there's a steady frame rate and the characters don't move all weird like. Um, let's see. But yeah, Bioware did well on that aspect. So good job, Bioware. Good job to your designers from the world design. But there's an onion. There's not a lot of towns or cities. There's, I think, one city you get to visit, and that's Valrail, and that's the capital of Orlay. Otherwise, no other cities to visit. Um, I think you can go to the Red Cliff. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't actually go there, which is actually something I found kind of funny. I'm like, oh, wait, weren't I supposed to go there at some point? So that shit's entirely optional. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was part of the storyline. I guess not. I Apparently, I overlapped it somehow, but uh, um, I, would like to, I would like to have seen more towns and cities in the game. Um, the wilderness and all that is nice and all. Um, Skyhold's really nice and all, but still, I, I like cities. I like towns. Um, that's what I like. That's that's what I liked about Skyrim for the most part. It had the perfect blend of you know your villages, your towns, and then you had the big city, which is uh, whatever the hell the city was called. I haven't played Skyrim in a while now, um, but yeah, the world sizes are fucking impressive. <laughs> like it's not open world, but God, it is damn close to open world. Um, yeah, there's a lot of shit to explore in these. Uh, in these areas, but I feel like there should be more in them um, a bit. I feel like there's there's enough with what they have, but there could be a bit more. Um, it functions how it should. It's not like this wide variety of space is wasted on nothing, but there could be a little more substance to it. But otherwise, this is a step in the right direction for the whatever next Dragon Age they decide to make. Um, but again, I, I want to see more towns and cities. I'm a big town and city kind of guy. Um, I all right. I'm gonna summarize this now that I've hit the 20 minute mark and I've kind of I've kind of got my points across all the ones I can think of off the top of my head, and then the ones I have listed here. Um, I pointed out. I think I pointed out a few more negatives, but the positives do outweigh the negatives by a significant margin. Significant margin. This game is leaps and steps better than Dragon Age 2, and it does take a lot of what Dragon Age Origins had and Dragon Age 2 had, molds them together, and spits out like this semi-perfect child. Um, and, and there is a lot of uh, things from Mass Effect, like a lot of the design looks a lot like uh, Mass Effect 3, which I do like. Um, I, I wasn't too big of a fan of the Dragon Age Origins design, uh, but I think Origins, or Dragon Age and Mass Effect are kind of built off the same general um, engine and design and all that stuff, but this one definitely took a lot from the Mass Effect uh, pages. Uh, there was some other stuff they borrowed from. Oh, uh, this th this also felt a bit more like Baldur's Gate, like the successor that it was supposed to be. Um, I, kind of, I guess. 
No, not really. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's 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 you know, it's kind of like Baldur's Gate, more so than Origins was. Uh, but again, again, I'm like this premise had everything going for it, but oh, is it over or underwhelming? At least to me, I felt it was underwhelming. Maybe I kind of maybe because it was my first time playing through, I kind of rushed through it. Maybe I didn't get the full experience. Um. I won't do an, an actual update video of like, oh, well, I changed my mind on everything. No. Um, what I'll probably do is uh, if, if at some point in another Let's Play I do, when I kinda, it kind of comes to mind, I'll probably just explain it then and there. Say, you know what? It, it actually wasn't that bad in this spot. Here, I, I stand by what I said. But otherwise, over here, you know, pretty good. Um, but it, it did have more of Origin's epicness and less of Dragon Age 2's watered-down bullshit nonsense just throwing shit at you in your face with the, you know, where it's like, all right, here's your build-up. Skip a few years. All right, you're, you're doing all this stuff. You're dealing with the Canary. All right, they're out of the way. All right, now we're on to the, clima the climax. Wait, what? Climax already? Yeah, okay, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. All right, now you're going to fight the final boss. All right, it's done. What the fuck? Um, and that had a lot to do with, uh, EA, you know, kind of kicking Bioware saying, get that fucker out, get it out, come on, put it out, no, it'll be fine, come on, it'll be fine, it'll work, it'll, we'll make money, we'll make tons of money, that's what patches and DLC are for, you know, so we can get more money off people. Yeah, look what happened. With this one, I think EA, I think Bioware, either Bioware bit back enough and said, hey, look at what your fans are saying, and EA's like, alright, whatever, we're wrong, even though we were right, we're wrong, but we're still right, despite the fact that we were wrong. But we're right. Just make a game. Just make us money. We don't care. Make us money. Do what you gotta do. And they they did well here. Um. So. Oh yeah. And then the characters. Like I said, the characters in this game are fucking amazing. Aside from a few, <coughs> the villain. <clears throat> but uh, I'll I'll let you guys decide that for yourselves. <laughs> he had no fucking personality. <laughs> Thinking back on, I'm like, wow, this guy is fucking one dimensional. You know, it's like, he's the elder one. He's going to be awesome. Uh, and I am the game. Uh, but anyways, I digress. <clears throat> Overall, though, if I had to score it, I'd give it like an 8.5 out of 10 uh, with patches and stuff. If they had in a um, approval meeting, meeting, <laughs> approval meeting. All right, we're going to have an approval meeting about this game. Anyways, an approval meter and add in a few more towns and cities. You know, through some DLC or something like that, then uh, my my score will probably be adjusted to about a nine. It's it's it did what it needed to do. I wasn't disappointed in any way, shape, or form. It's just it's like I wanted it this way, I wanted it that way. But otherwise, you gave me for the most part what I wanted. It's like um, I wanted that brand spanking new game, but you kind of bought it for me used with a few scratches on it. But otherwise, hey, it works just fine, and it it I, it appeals to me, and I like it. I'm probably gonna play this a few times over. So, um, with that being said, I've kind of kept this review going longer than I wanted to, but let me know what you guys think. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you absolutely fucking hate it? Um, do you not give a shit about Dragon Age? If so, why the fuck are you watching this video? Anyways, folks, um, have a good night. I'll see you all next time.